Hello, everybody. It is T Swales here on tswales.com, and this is a briefing on the upcoming snow systems that'll be coming into the Midwest over the next 48 hours. This is going to come in two waves here in the Midwest, and the first one is uh, rapidly taking shape to the west of us here as we get into the late night hours on Tuesday. Let's look at the moisture that's coming up out of the Gulf of Mexico. This is all warm, moist air, and it's overriding the colder air that's at the surface here in the Midwest, and that is what we call overrunning, and that's the forcing necessary to generate the snow that we are expecting on Wednesday. And that will kind of let up Wednesday night, and then if you look way up here in northwestern Montana, southern Canada, another disturbance is found up that way, and that one quickly follows, and by the time we get to Thursday night and Friday, that should generate some additional snows and some additional accumulation is expected from that. So let's go to the upper air pattern here. And the first thing you can see on this is the system that's going to come across the area on Wednesday. It's not overly organized and uh, really, again, it's just a warm infection event. But now you're looking at Thursday morning and we're starting to see a closed low out here in Kansas. That's going to produce some pretty good lift and it'll also generate a wraparound deformation band that sweeps in from the east and comes across the northern portion of that upper air low. That is why... Snow once again develops then on Thursday night and should last into most of Friday, at least on an occasional basis. Now, the exact track of that is going to be really critical. Today, it's a little further to the south, so I think the southern part of our viewing area, especially Highway 30, maybe I-80 south, should see the heavier accumulations from that. But a little deviation north or south, that could certainly make a difference. So we, we do have to keep tabs on that in the next 24 hours. But the whole thing finally works its way off to the east here. And by a later Friday night, that's the end of that. And that'll be the end of our precipitation then for the rest of the upcoming weekend. Now, as far as the snow bands go, this is the first one that you're looking at here. And this is at noon on Wednesday. And where you see in green is where you're starting to see the snow. And that's just beginning to get into eastern Iowa as we go through the day. And now you're looking at six o'clock in the evening and there's snow over much of Eastern Iowa. Not a lot though going on in Illinois. And it really does look like it's gonna kind of dry up a little bit as it goes that general direction. So I'm thinking out of this first wave, still an inch or two, maybe three in parts of Eastern Iowa, and then perhaps an inch as I get into the Western portions of my area out there in Western Illinois. So that's gonna buzz on by then and we'll see some light precipitation, maybe some freezing drizzle, uh, you know, maybe a few flurries around as we go through the day on Thursday. Watch what happens then. We start seeing the secondary wave come on through, and low pressure is going to start to take shape in Missouri. And see the greens? Once again, they're starting to advance northward, and that is what's known as the deformation band, and that's the next round of snow which should come sweeping into eastern Iowa and northwestern Illinois then as we get towards late Thursday night and during the day on Friday. And that could produce another two to four inches of accumulation. But it does depend exactly on the track as to who gets in and the worst of that. And right now, I'd say that's the southern half of the area. Getting on to the snow accumulations then. This is what our model of the GFS indicates. And this is a 10 to 1 ratio, ratio here, which should pan out pretty well because of the wet nature of the snow. It does show a lot of areas with five or six inches of accumulation. Again, knowing the way these models work, I probably at least slice an inch out of that. But for the two systems combined, it does show a lot of areas of getting anywhere from four to six inches of accumulation. That's both rounds of snow. Now we're taking you on out here. And this is um, what we got here, the gem. This is a Canadian model. It's a little further south on this, which is certainly a possibility. So I wouldn't rule that out, but it's still got a lot of places with four to five, maybe even six inches of accumulation. And last but not least, here is the European, and this run, which came in, uh, did come down a little bit on the snow accumulations, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if this works out pretty well here. At least I'm leaning on it right now. Up around Highway 20, it does show some four-inch accumulations, and then as you get a little further south, that's where you run into about the five-inch line somewhere around the Quad Cities. But... Um, you know, again, with the snow ratios being down around 10 to 1, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit high here. And some areas, maybe 5 inches. But I think the general amounts in this whole system should come into that 3 to 5 inch range. And that's the way I'm seeing that part of it. This here 
is something that's kind of interesting. It's a Shref model, and it's um, an average of a lot of different models. And so what we're looking at here, and you can see a lot of numbers off to the right, one of the members here, and there's over, what is 20-some members in this, has as much as 10 inches of snow in Cedar Rapids, and then there's a couple that has 2 inches, 2.17 inches, you know, a whole lot less. So that's why we like ensembles, because we can get the average of this and come up with a much more reliable number. So you throw out that 10.74 inch amount and 2 inch amount, and you start getting into averages that come in somewhere down here. This is the mean, which shows about 4.5 inches for Cedar Rapids. I think that's a reasonable number, four to five inches in my area, and really a lot of eastern Iowa and western Illinois should come in with numbers that look like this by the time it's all said and done. So that's an ensemble, and that is why those things are really helpful in a scenario like this. And finally, I wanted to just show you what the temperatures do, because this is kind of amazing. On Wednesday, we start at 21 degrees, but we eventually get up to 30 here in Cedar Rapids, and then you'll notice after that, 32 on Thursday, 33 on Friday, and 33 on Saturday. And look at the lows, 30, 31, and 31. So that's a nearly steady state atmosphere there. And uh, just not a lot of range in the temperatures. And with them hovering right around 32, that's why this is going to be a wet snow. And the roads that are treated around eastern Iowa and western Illinois should be pretty manageable as those temperatures stay up there near that 32 degree mark. So not a lot of range of temperatures once the snow commences, and it won't snow all the time. I want to stress that there'll be moments again on Wednesday where it's a little bit heavier, and we get a break, and then again later Thursday night or Friday should be another burst of snow, and then that is the end of it. Bottom line, looks like most areas should end up with three, four, perhaps as much as five inches of accumulation. And of course, we'll be watching it, have more for you during the day on Wednesday as our data gets better and better as the storm system approaches. Thanks and roll weather.